representing proportional relationships with equations. In this lesson, you will use equations to represent proportional relationships. Joanna is hosting a movie night, and her guests are getting hungry. She needs to order 40 slices of pizza to feed them all. The total cost of 40 slices of pizza is $80. Joanna knows that the cost of one pizza slice is $2 because she divides the total cost, $80, by the number of pizza slices, 40. The unit rate in terms of cost per pizza slice is $2. In this example, the relationship between cost and number of pizza slices is proportional. A unit rate is the constant of proportionality between these two quantities. We can express a proportional relationship between two quantities as an equation using their constant of proportionality. We can use equations to compare two quantities in a proportional relationship. Equations that represent proportional relationships have a common form. The value of one quantity is equal to the constant of proportionality times the other quantity. In general, if y is proportional to x and k is the constant of proportionality, then the equation that represents the relationship between y and x is y equals kx. In this lesson, you'll learn to represent a proportional relationship between two quantities as an equation using their proportionality constant. You'll also learn to find the value of one quantity in the equation if you know the value of the other quantity and the constant. Equations of Proportional Relationships Here's an example that shows how we can use equations to represent proportional relationships. When Jeb woke up this morning and looked out his bedroom window, he saw that it was snowing. He switched on the TV and heard the weather forecaster predict one inch of snowfall every three hours. Let's write an equation that shows the relationship between the snowfall in inches, W, and the time in hours, t. First, we need to find the constant of proportionality in terms of inches of snowfall per hour. Constant of proportionality equals snowfall in inches over time in hours equals one inch over three hours. Okay, at this point, they you keep using this term, constant of proportionality. I, like I've suggested for you to do, is Try to click on the resources tab. Try to find it in a glossary. I was unable, there, there's no glossary for this lesson. So I click on the dictionary. I type in the word constant of proportionality. And it, it, it wasn't helpful proportionality might be, but that wasn't helpful. So I went to the trusty internet. I looked up constant of proportionality. It's the constant value, often written as K, relating amounts that rise or fall uniformly together. It is the ratio of the amounts Y and X. So the ratio of Y and X is the constant, price per gallon, uh, your wages per hour, things like that. So put another way, y equals k times x. So these are, these are just flipped around to figure out a different type of formula. For example, you're paid $20 an hour, the constant of proportionality is 20 because Pay equals 20 times hours worked. I did copy that and I pasted it into my notes in case I needed to see it later. Okay, we'll continue from this spot right here. Equals one third inch per hour. The constant of proportionality is one third inch per hour which means one-third inch of snow is predicted to fall every hour. Let's break down how this constant of proportionality relates the two quantities. The snowfall in inches is one-third times the time in hours. 
If W is the snowfall in inches and T is the time in hours, we can write a general relationship between the amount of snowfall and time using this equation. W over T equals one-third. We can rewrite the equation in a standard form by multiplying both sides of the equation by T. W equals one-third T. And by standard form, they mean with one variable on one side of the equation and the rest of the terms on the other. Whereas this is two variables and a term. Let's look at another example of a proportional relationship. Olivia is making bead bracelets for her friends. She can make three bracelets in 15 minutes. In the following activity, you will write the equation that represents the proportional relationship between the number of bracelets Olivia makes and the time she spends making them. In this activity, you will use equations to represent this proportional relationship. Olivia is making bead bracelets for her friends. She can make three bracelets in 15 minutes. Part A, find the constant of proportionality in terms of minutes per bracelet. So I copied down the question just so I had it here. We're going to use the formula to solve for constant proportionality. K is K equals Y times X. In words, that means constant proportionality is K, which equals Y per X. The slash is read as per, as in 12 slices of pizza per large pizza. So the constant proportionality equals M over B, which is the same as the number of minutes per bracelet. Minutes per bracelet equals 15 over 3, which equals 5, because 15 divided by 3 equals 5, which means 5 minutes per bracelet. Part B, what does the proportionality constant represent in this situation? The portion proportionality constant of five minutes per bracelet means it takes Olivia five minutes to make one bracelet. Part C, write an equation to represent the proportionality relationship. Use the constant of proportionality you found in part A. Be sure to assign a variable for each quantity. So K is the constant proportionality and m or sorry k equals constant of proportionality which is five minutes per bracelet from part a m equals minutes b equals bracelets so the equation is k equals five times b by the way, I use K as the variable bracelets per minute because I don't want to get confused with the M for minutes. When I click on submit and show sample answer, they are using M for the constant. I'm not sure why. Here's another way to set up the equation. Time equals constant of proportionality times the number of bracelets where we let M be the time in minutes and let B be the number of bracelets. We substitute the variables M and B and the value of the proportionality constant, five minutes per bracelet into the equation. Five equals, sorry, M equals five B. Okay, part D. Now find the constant of proportionality in terms of number of bracelets per minute. To find the constant of proportionality in bracelets per minute, we divide the number of bracelets by the time taken. 
constant of proportionality, k, equals 3 over 15, we can reduce that, and that equals 1 over 5 bracelets per minute. So part D, K equals three bracelets in 15 minutes. So we know that that is K over 15. Sorry, K equals three over 15. K equals three over 15. If we divide that by three to reduce it, we get one over five. Three divided by three is one. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So we're simply reducing it. So that leaves us with 1 fifth bracelets per minute. Part E. What does the proportionality constant represent in this situation? The proportionality constant, 1 over five or one fifth bracelet per minute means Olivia can make one fifth of a bracelet in one minute. In other words, one bracelet takes five minutes to make. If you want another real world example, ask Mr. Wright. Part F, write an equation to represent the proportional relationship. Use the constant of proportionality that you found in part D. Be sure to assign a variable for each quantity. Again, I have B equals number of bracelets, K equals constant proportionality, and M equals minutes. So we substitute the variables and the constant proportionality from part D into this equation. B equals k times m, and we get b equals one-fifth m. Part g. How are the constants of proportionality you found in part a and d related? So the constant of proportionality from part a is 5, aka 5 over 1. We know that that fraction means 5 because it's 5 times 1 over 1, which is 5 over 1. I could prove that to you later if you need it. Minutes per bracelet. The constant of proportionality from part D is 1 over 5 bracelets per minute. So A says 5 minutes per bracelet, D says one-fifth of a bracelet per minute. The constants of proportionality 5 and 1 over 5 are reciprocals of each other. If you need to know what the word reciprocal means, look it up or ask Mr. Wright. Part H. The equation from part, oh sorry, are the two equations you developed in part C and F equivalent? Explain. The equation from part C is A equals 5B. The equation from part F is B equals 1 over 5 or 1 fifth K. Are the equivalent? Let's see. Let's see if they are equivalent. So, for part H, we have part C, which is K equals 5 times B. And we have part F, which equals B equals 1 over 5 times K. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this part of the equation, the 5, down. And where the B is, we're going to substitute for B. 
This is just like when we solved for Teresa's height of 60 inches, and then we went back and put the answer 60 inches in place of all the T's and solved for Paul and then solved for Steve. So that's what we're going to do. So the constant of proportionality equals 5 times B. B equals 1 fifth over K. We substitute 1 fifth K for the B. Bam! Magic. Now, we solve this out. If we divide... If we divide both sides by 5, and we know that in an equation, if we do one thing to one side, we, can, we have to do it to the other. So to undo the multiplication of 5 times 1 fifth K, which is B, we divide to get rid of it. So then we do the same thing to the other side. K divided by 5. That k divided by 5, we know that 1k is what, is what this says. It, it, it essentially means 1k. So 1k divided by 5, so 1 divided by 5 is 1 fifth k, which equals 1 fifth k. They're equal. They are equivalent. And notice that I used the paper to keep my line, so all the equations lined up. So to answer part H, they are equivalent. You've seen that we can represent a proportional relationship between two quantities as an equation using the constant of proportionality. In standard form, the equation of a proportional relationship will always be in the same form, y equals kx. In this equation, y and x are the quantities, and k is the constant of proportionality. All right, for this question, we are looking at Tisha enjoys reading in her spare time. She reads four pages every one tenth of an hour. The proportional, portion, proportional relationship between the number of pages and the number of hours is represented by the equation P equals. Well, let's see if I can do my magic here. Equals P equals, well, there's the word. So let, we have P over K, H equals K, the, cons, the constant proportionality. So if we substitute four for pages, remember here is, the number of pages, boom, pages, and over here we've got the number of hours, H, hours, I can't type very well, on, or write very well on here, okay, and then is represented by the equation P equals K times hours, I believe. Let me uh, erase that, close this, and pause this. So in your tutorial, it says the proportional relationship between the number of pages. I don't think I can highlight that, but I'll try. Oh, good. And the number of hours, H, is represented by the equation P 
equals 40 h. Write the standard equation in, or sorry, write the equation in standard form with a constant of proportionality greater than one. So p by itself is the, uh, the standard form. There we go. Next. Relationships. Using equations of proportional relationships. Now that you know how to create equations for proportional relationships, you can use these equations to find the value of either of the two quantities in the relationship. Given the first quantity, you can find the second. Here's an example of how this works. Tyler is painting some rooms in his house. He uses one gallon of paint to cover a surface area of 200 square feet. In this example, the unit rate or constant of proportionality is 200 square feet per gallon. If G is the gallons of paint that Tyler uses to paint a surface area of P square feet, we can write the equation of this proportional relationship as P equals 200 G. Using the equation P equals 200 G, you can find the number of gallons of paint Tyler needs to paint a specific area of his home. You can also use this equation to calculate the area Tyler can paint using a certain number of gallons. The equation is very handy. For example, to find the area that Tyler can paint using 1.5 gallons of paint, substitute the value of G, 1.5, in the equation and solve for P. P equals 200 times 1.5. P equals 300. With 1.5 gallons of paint, Tyler can paint an area of 300 square feet. This goes back to the pizza problem at the very beginning. For example, we have either the number of slices per person at the party, and we can figure out how many slices we need, or we have how many pizzas, and we can feed how many people at the party. It's just a different, just the, the relationship is proportional in that we can use it either way. It just depends on what we're trying to solve for and the information we have. If you are given the total area in square feet that Tyler needs to paint and the proportionality constant, you can find the number of gallons of paint Tyler needs. For example, if Tyler wants to paint an area of 500 square feet, you can find out how many gallons of paint he needs by substituting the value of P, 500, in the equation and solving for G. P equals 200 G. 500 equals 200 G. 500 over 200 equals G. 2.5 equals G. Tyler needs 2.5 gallons to paint 500 square feet. Buying two full gallons won't be enough. If Tyler cannot buy a half gallon, he will have to buy three gallons knowing he'll have some left over. Please wait, your question is loading. Ah, our answers are there. You didn't see that. Select the correct answer from each drop-down menu. Nick bought apples at a farmer's market, where five apples cost 
$4.45. If Nick bought seven apples, he paid how much? If Nick paid this much for some apples, he bought how many apples? So let's pause this and uh, look at this other option over here. All right, so we have the problem. If Nick bought seven apples, he paid how much? So the first thing we need to know is the constant proportionality. The constant proportionality is that five apples cost $4.45. That's the given. That's what they put on the sign. We, we, don't need to ch we can't change that. That's why it's called a constant. The number of apples he bought, the number of dollar bills in his wallet, those things might change. Again, five apples cost $4.45 is our constant proportionality. So we take the cost, $4.45, and we divide it by five because five apples cost that much, and we get how much per apple. Again, if I used a calculator, I type in 4.45 divided by five, leaves us with 89 cents per apple. So if he buys seven apples, as the problem suggests, seven times 89 cents equals $6.23. Now, the next part of the question asks, well, what if he has $9.79? How many apples could he buy? Assuming he spent all of that on apples, right? So we know that the constant proportionality is 89 cents per apple. So we divide $9.79 by 89 cents. And through the magic of television, doo -doo -doo -doo, through the magic of television and the wonderful opportunity to have a calculator right here. What did I say? We had 9.79 divided by, oh man, is that going to happen to me? Point eighty nine. Oops, clear nine point seven nine divided by point eight nine equals. Wait a minute, that's not right. Let's try that again. Nine point. Seven nine divided by point eight nine. So the amount of money in his wallet to spend on apples, how much per apple leaves us with eleven. So going back to my sheet of paper, he had six dollars and twenty three cents. Is that one of the options? Yes, it is. Let's select it. The next part, we did the division of $9.79 that he had in his wallet. And that lets us know, yep, 11. There it is. Submit. Yay. All right. Correct, Mundo. Be sure to look at the explanations as needed. I sure hope this is recording right with all these lags. In this lesson, you learn to represent a proportional relationship between two quantities as an equation. Equations that represent proportional relationships have a common form. 
The value of one quantity is equal to the constant of proportionality times the value of the other quantity. You can use equations for proportional relationships to find the value of one quantity if you're given the value of the other quantity. First, find the constant of proportionality for the relationship. Then, substitute a known quantity into the equation. Finally, solve for the unknown quantity. Congratulations, you've completed the tutorial on representing proportional relationships with equations. Please note that it sounds more difficult than it actually is. We do this kind of stuff all the time. Before birthday parties, before we spend our paycheck, all of that. You know, we, we look at, oh man, if I work 40 hours this week and I make $15 an hour, how much am I going to have on Friday in my paycheck? Or, huh, I only got $350 in my paycheck. Divide that by how much I get paid, $15 an hour. That means I worked 30 hours this week. But I know I worked 40 hours this week. Wait a minute. My check is light. It's too thin. I should have gotten more. I'm missing part of my money. So we do that kind of math all the time. This is just putting the word to it and to show you how easily you can flip between the two. All right, remember to do your guided notes. Remember to submit them. Remember to do excellent on the mastery test. Have a great one. Be safe. Cheers to your greatness.